Hello and welcome friends. Today I am going to discuss the topic entitled Translation, Various Steps in Protein Synthesis, Ribosome Structure and Assembly, Processes Involved in Initiation, Elongation and Termination of Polypeptides. The main objectives of the E-module are to study the various components involved in protein synthesis, to understand the role of ribosomes in protein synthesis, to study the steps involved in protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is one of the most fundamental biological process by which individual cells build their specific proteins. As you have studied earlier, during transcription, the RNA copy of the protein, genetic information encoded in DNA molecule is produced in the nucleus and it is called a messenger RNA, that is mRNA. The RNA molecule is sent to the cytoplasm which helps to bring all components required for the actual protein synthesis together, that is amino acids, transport RNAs, ribosome, etc. In the cytoplasm, the protein polymers are actually synthesized through chemical reactions. That is why the process is known as protein synthesis or even more precisely protein biosynthesis. Components involved in the protein synthesis. The process of protein synthesis translates the codons that is nucleotide triplets of the messenger RNA into the 20 symbol code of amino acids that build the polypeptide chain of the proteins. The process of mRNA translation begins from its 5 dash end towards its 3 dash end as the polypeptide chain is synthesized from its amino terminal end to its carboxy terminal end. There are almost no significant differences in the protein synthesis steps in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. However, there is one major distinction between the structure of the mRNAs. Prokaryotes often have several coding regions that is polycystronic mRNA while the eukaryotic mRNA has only one coding region that is monocystronic mRNA. The various components involved in protein synthesis are the mRNA to be translated, the tRNA, the amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme, the two ribosomal subunits, small and larger subunit. Number one, messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is a large family of RNA molecules that convey genetic information from DNA to the ribosome where they specify the amino acid sequence of the protein product of gene expression. Following transcription of primary transcript mRNA known as pre-mRNA by RNA polymerase process it and mature mRNA is translated into a polymer of amino acids a protein as summarized in the central dogma of molecular biology. As in DNA, mRNA genetic information is in the sequence of nucleotides which are arranged into codons consisting of three base pairs each. Each codon encodes for a specific amino acid except the stop codon which terminates protein synthesis. All mRNAs are read in 5 dash to 3 dash direction and polypeptide chains are synthesized from the amino to the carbox terminus. Each amino acid as specified by three bases that is a codon in the mRNA according to a nearly universal genetic code. Number two, transfer RNA molecules. All cells contain a set of transfer RNAs, each of which is a small RNA molecule. The tRNAs by binding at one end to a specific codon in the mRNA at their other end to the amino acid specified by that codon enable amino acids to line up according to the sequence of nucleotides in the mRNA. Each tRNA is designated to carry only one of the 20 amino acids used for protein synthesis. A tRNA that carries glycine is designated as tRNA gly and so on. Each of the 20 amino acids has at least one type of tRNA assigned to it and most have several tRNAs. Before an amino acid is incorporated into a protein chain, it is attached by its carbox end to the 3 dash end of the appropriate tRNA molecule. This attachment serves an important purpose. It covalently links the amino acid to tRNA containing the correct anticodon, the sequence of three nucleotides that is complementary to the three nucleotide codon that specify that amino acid on an mRNA molecule. Codon anticodon pairing enable each amino acid to be inserted in a growing protein chain according to the dictates of the sequence of nucleotide in the mRNA. 
thereby allowing the genetic code to be used to translate nucleotide sequences into protein sequences. This is the essential adapter function of the tRNA molecule with one end attached to an amino acid and the other paired to a codon. The tRNA converts sequences of nucleotides into sequences of amino acids. Amino acid tRNA synthetase enzyme. Only the tRNA molecule and not its attached amino acid determines why the amino acid is added during a protein synthesis. How does a tRNA molecule become covalently linked to the one amino acid in 20 that is its appropriate partner? The mechanism depends on enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase which couple each amino acid to its appropriate set of tRNA molecules. There is a different synthetase enzyme for every amino acid. One attaches glycine to all tRNA gly molecules, another attaches alanine to all tRNA alanine molecules and so on. The coupling reaction that creates an amino acyl tRNA molecule is catalyzed in two steps. Although the tRNA molecules serve as the final adapters in converting nucleotide sequences into amino acid sequences, the amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzymes are adapters of equal importance to the decoding process. Thus, the genetic code is translated by two set of adapters that act sequentially, each matching one molecular surface to another with great specificity. It is their combined action that associates each sequence of three nucleotides in the mRNA molecule. That is, each codon with its particular amino acid. Number four, ribosome. Ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Ribosomes are usually designated according to their rates of sedimentation, 70S for bacterial ribosomes and 80S for the somewhat larger ribosomes of eukaryotic cells. Both prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes are composed of two distinct subunits, each containing characteristic proteins and RNAs. The fact that cells typically contain many ribosomes reflect the central importance of protein synthesis in cell metabolism. The general structure of prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes are similar, although they differ in some details. The small subunit designated 30S of E. coli ribosome consists of the 60S R RNA and 21 proteins. The larger subunit designated 50S is composed of the 23S and 5S R RNA and 34 proteins. The small subunit designated 40S of eukaryotic ribosomes is composed of the 18S R RNA and approximately 30 proteins. The large subunit that is 60S contains 28S, 5.8S and 5S R RNA and about 45 proteins. Now we will take on the second component of this lecture that is protein synthesis. The steps involved in protein synthesis are number one activation of amino acids. It is the step in which each of the participating amino acid reacts with ATP to form amino acid AMP complex and pyrophosphate. The reaction is catalyzed by a specific amino acid activating enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase in the presence of magnesium 2 positive ions. There is a separate amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme for each kind of amino acid. Number two, charging of tRNA. It is a step in which the amino acid AMP enzyme complex joins with the amino acid binding site of its specific tRNA, while its COH group bonds with the OH group of the terminal base triplet CCA. The reaction is catalyzed by the same enzyme, amino acyl tRNA synthetase. The resulting tRNA amino acid complex is called a charged tRNA. AMP and enzymes are released. The tRNA Amino acid complex moves to the ribosome, the site of protein synthesis. Number three, activation of ribosome. It is the step in which the smaller and the larger subunits of ribosomes are joined together. This is brought about by mRNA chain. The later joins the smaller ribosomal subunits with the help of the first codon by a base pairing 
with an appropriate sequence on our RNA. The combination of the two is called initiation complex. The larger subunit later joins the smaller subunit forming an active ribosome. Activation of ribosome by mRNA requires proper concentration of magnesium ions. Number four, initiation of polypeptide chain. The mRNA chain has at its 5' end an initiator or start codon AUG or GUG that signals the beginning of polypeptide formation. This codon lies close to the P site of the ribosome. The amino acid formal methionine initiates the process. It is carried by tRNA having an anticodon UAC which bonds with the initiator codon AUG of mRNA. Initiation factors IF1, IF2 and IF3 and GTP promote the initiation process. The large ribosomal subunit now joins the small subunit to complete the ribosome. At this stage, GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. The ribosome has formal methionine bearing tRNA at the P site. Number fifth step is elongation of polypeptide chain. Charged tRNA is arriving at the A site, reading its codon on the mRNA. Amino acid of the tRNA at P site is ready to be transferred to the amino acid of tRNA at the A site. Amino acids are joined by peptide bond and tRNA is discharged from the P site. Peptide chain carrying tRNA is translocated to P site, making A site free to receive another charged tRNA. Three elongation factors, elongation factor Tu, elongation factor Ts and elongation factor G assist in the elongation of the polypeptide chain. The process is also catalyzed by the enzyme peptidyl transferase located on the ribosome. In this process, the linkage between the first amino acid and its tRNA is broken and the COOH group now forms a peptide bond with the free amino group or the second amino acid. Thus, the second tRNA carries a dipeptide. The energy required for the formation of the peptide bond comes from the free energy released by the separation of amino acid from its tRNA. The first tRNA, now uncharged, separates from the mRNA chain at the P site of the ribosome and returns to the mixed pool of tRNAs in the cytoplasm. Here, it is now available to transport another molecule of its specific amino acid. Now the ribosome moves one codon along the mRNA in the three dash direction. With this, the tRNA dipeptide complex at the A site is pulled to the P site. This process is called translocation. It requires GTP and a translocase protein called elongation factor G. The GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate to release energy for the process. At this stage, a third tRNA molecule with its own specific amino acid arginine, for example, arrives at A site of the ribosome and binds with the help of anticodon AGA to the complementary codon UCU of mRNA chain. The dipeptide formal methionine proline is shifted from the preceding tRNA on the third tRNA wire it joins the amino acid arginine again with the help of peptidyl transferase enzyme. The dipeptide thus becomes a tripeptide, formal methionine, proline, arginine. The second tRNA being now uncharged leaves mRNA chain vacating the P site. The tRNA tripeptide complex is translocated from A site to P site. The entire process involving arrival of tRNA amino acid complex peptide bond formation and translocation is repeated. As the ribosome moves over the mRNA, all the codons of mRNA arrive at the A site one after another and the peptide chain grows. Thus, amino acids are linked up into a polypeptide in a sequence communicated by the DNA through the messenger RNA. A polypeptide chain which is in the process of synthesis is often called as nascent polypeptide. The growing polypeptide chain always remains attached to its original ribosome and is now transferred from one ribosome to another. Only one polypeptide chain can be synthesized at a time on a given ribosome. 
the another step is modification of released polypeptide. The just released polypeptide is a straight linear exhibiting a primary molecule structure. It may lose some amino acids from the end with the help of a peptidase enzyme and then coil and fold on itself to acquire secondary and tertiary structure. It may even combine with other polypeptides to have quaternary structure. After this, another step is polysome formation. When the ribosome has moved sufficiently down the mRNA chain towards 3 dash end, another ribosome takes up the position at the initiator codon of mRNA and starts synthesis of a second molecule of the same polypeptide chain. At any given time, the mRNA chain will therefore carry many ribosomes over which are similar polypeptide chains of varying length, shortest near the initiator codon and longest near the terminator codon. Synthesis of many molecules of the same polypeptide simultaneously from one mRNA molecule by a polysome is called translational amplification. With this, we conclude today's lecture, translation, various steps in protein synthesis, ribosome structure and assembly, process involved in initiation, elongation and termination of polypeptides. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.